Okay, so this is just a quick disclaimer. This is not the only way to pack a parachute or the correct way with air quotations. This is my way. This is the easiest method that I've learned thus far. The terminology used in this video may not be correct or proper, but is explained in the simplest manner possible for beginners. Once again, there are many ways to pack a parachute and this is my way of doing it and explaining it. I hope it helps you on your packing journey. Enjoy. What's going on guys? Okay, so my name is Salvador Chang. For those of you who do not know, I am a packer and a rigger here at Skydive Deland. Um, today we're going to go ahead and do a repack, basically a main from start to finish. This way you can see my point of view, what I see personally when I'm packing a parachute. Um, in my last video, I did a secondhand person point of view, I guess, like um, somebody was basically filming me, but this one I'm going to do from my point of view. This way you can see exactly what I'm seeing and you can see it like as, as if you were packing the parachute yourself. So let's go ahead and get into it. Once again, this is gonna be the tutorial from start to finish of how to pack a parachute. This way you can go out and enjoy yourself and do a safe skydive. All right, so I'm gonna try and shoot this one time and one time only. Uh, basically, I'm gonna grab the rig and I'm gonna make sure that the lines are separated from the rig and they're not cut up in the leg straps or anything like that. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it back, uh, lay it, the rig down out on its belly, uh, making sure that everything's spread out, checking my three rings. And then once again, checking my lines, making sure that the brakes are stood correctly. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and walk the lines up. And with my fingers, I'm separating the lines to make sure that there's no twists or tangles. I'm gonna shake the canopy um, and then step out, dump everything into one hand, check my steering lines, they're good. I'm gonna go ahead and milk the excess out and over my shoulders from the lines into the canopy, turn the canopy 90 degrees. I'm gonna grab the nose cells I'm gonna go ahead and count them out, just following the seam along the way. Once again, you're either gonna have nine or seven, just depending on the canopy. Um, this one, I believe, has nine. You're gonna go ahead and flatten it out. I'm gonna grab all the nose cells with my left hand and then give it a shimmy with my right and my left hand and then throw the nose cells in between my legs as I do that. Separating the left and the right side of the canopy, I'm gonna go ahead and do the A lines first. So I'm gonna count out the five, one, two, three, four, five, and then karate chop from the inside, working my way out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and follow the seams all the way up uh, to my control lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my hand uh, palm up and go ahead and toss those four lines in there between my thumb and my pointer finger. I'm gonna go ahead and do my D lines and then my C lines. Um, and then karate chop. Once again, I'm gonna use my other hand, my right hand, to push the material out and make sure the lines are in. And then I'm gonna do that for all my line sets, working my way down. Once again, I'm gonna do the exact same thing that I did on my left hand and move it over to my right hand. So I'm gonna count the uh, control lines out, one, two, three, four, and then move on to my D lines and then my C lines. And you can see I do that pretty quickly now. Once again, this is what I do for a living, so it kind of makes sense. But yeah, and then I do the flick of the wrist, and then you should have two cones kind of pushing everything towards the middle. And then this is super important. You're going to go ahead and uh, quarter the slider. And it should look like that at the end of it. I can go ahead and pick up everything with my right hand and grab the nose, or sorry, the tail, and then find the label. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that it's nice and centered with that center seam. I'm going to do the right-hand side. I'm gonna go ahead and knee the left hand side. And now I have a little cocoon going. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up the lines at the top. I'm just twisting and pinching at the same time, twisting and pinching. And then with that, I'm gonna go ahead and pick up my right hand and then finish the twisting of the cocoon with my, or sorry, pick up my left hand, do the twisting of the cocoon with my right hand. And then you should be able to uh, go ahead and toss your left hand under and kind of pick up the whole thing and lay it down gently, making sure you have line tension so that your lines don't look like spaghetti. Um, and then you should be able to do the um, pilot shoot, the D-bag at this point. I'm making sure my D-bag is not inside out. Everything looks good. The grommets are basically flat and I'm setting it up so I can go ahead and cock my pilot shoot. Um, super important once again. I grab the little hacky, I use my right hand as a little pulley system and then I make sure everything's taut. I do a snap test. It catches air, I know I'm in good shape. I check the D-bag, and then this is probably the hardest part, so I'm excited for this. You go ahead and drop your knees on the label, making sure not to put them on the grommets. You can see that center seam, I'm keeping it centered the whole time, and then I'm gonna lay on it, pushing the air out of it. It goes black here for a second, because the GoPro was in my mouth. But once again, I'm gonna go ahead and push the air out of it, trying to get the cigar roll, or the little cocoon, the size relative of the D-bag, because 
the tighter I can get this, the easier it's gonna make my next step of actually getting the canopy into the D-bag. So you can see me just kind of pushing all the air out, making sure everything's nice and tight. I still have that center seam nice in the middle. I have the left and the right side of the canopy, grabbing the whole thing with my left hand, moving my knees up, and then using that white center seam to go ahead and fold it over. And then I go ahead and mount it, pulling my left hand out from underneath it. I do the left hand side of the canopy, just kind of tucking and rolling everything in. Um, doing the right hand side of the canopy, once again, doing the same exact motion, tucking and rolling. And at the end of it, you should be able to manage everything with one hand. This way you can go ahead and get your D-bag set up. As you can see, I use my right hand, I get my D-bag set up, and I just slide the grommets underneath as far down as possible. And then I bring the D-bag around the canopy, starting with the left side, then I move on to the right side. And I do this pretty quickly, there's Beck. Uh, co-worker of mine but yeah once again and then you tuck it in boom good to go making sure that everything is uh, all set up I have my grommets on both my left and my right side I go ahead and grab the top of the canopy and pull it down fold it over and then I'm gonna do my second S fold here making sure that I tuck in the grommets and then at the end of it you should have kind of two lips from the canopy with the lines coming out in between the two lips and then I'm using my weight to rubber bands to the grommets um, that's going to make my life as easy as possible. Once again, I'm bringing the rubber bands to the grommets, through the grommets, making the L, and then doing my first stow. We always double stow, so you're going to see me when I'm doing this. I'm going to always get double stow. I'm just kind of tucking everything in. Once again, doing my primary stows. There's four of them. Uh, rubber band through grommet. Once again, I make my L with my right hand, put it the rubber band up to my knuckles, kind of pull the rig towards me, and then I do the peace sign and do the double stow. There you are. Once again, if you haven't seen my other video, I go into a lot more detail and I'm a lot slower. So you should definitely check out my other video um, and then come back to this one once again. This is just a POV of exactly what I see and how I work. Um, but if you're looking for more like a slow, step-by-step, -step, more detailed video, you're gonna wanna go ahead and check out the video that I posted um, recently, most recently of the pack jobs and how I get that done. But yeah, I did all my primary stows. You can go ahead and see I just double stowed all of them and then I'm just going to go working my way back and forth, back and forth, um, stowing these lines. This way we can go ahead and get the canopy and the D-bag into the container itself and then move forward from there. Uh, this is probably the most tedious part of the whole pack. But once again, if you've made it here, you've done good because of course the canopy is in the bag, which is the hardest part of the whole situation. So. Yep, I'm gonna go ahead and stow, right, left, right, left, back and forth, back and forth. I'm gonna go ahead and do this final stow because you can see my excess is about the size of the D-bag, so I know I'm in good shape there. I go ahead and do this last stow, and then I double check the excess. Yep, looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and dump the D-bag and the canopy over the rig, and then this is a good time to double check your bridle to make sure it's cocked. I go ahead and do the same thing, do a snap test. It catches air, I'm in good shape, toss it down, and then this is where we're going to go ahead and put the risers away. So I'm going to grab the risers, make sure there's no twists and tangles, making sure the handles are towards the reserve uh, in the container. And then I'm just going to go ahead and tuck them in, make sure everything's nice and pretty, as uh, neat as possible. Kind of tuck them in. Once again, every rig is different. This rig has magnets on it, so I'm just going to go ahead and make sure I tuck in the magnets, make sure everything's nice and presentable. That's what we're looking for. It looks clean. This way, if I'm going to jump it or somebody's going to jump it, they can do a quick gear check and make sure that everything looks nice and clean. It looks the way it should be, and then they can go about their jump and enjoy themselves. So, once again, just doing the exact same thing that I did on the right side of the rig to the left side of the rig, just tucking everything in, making sure those magnets are where they need to be. Everything's right on top of each other, tucked in. Moving kind of, sorry I'm talking so fast, I just got to keep up. So once again, I'm moving the top uh, flap down. I'm getting the container ready to go ahead and put the bag in. I put the bag on my knee, and then I'm making sure that the lines, there's no twist in them, and then I'm putting them in the corners of the container. And then I'm just going to go ahead and drop the D-bag into the container right there. With the grommet facing up i'm going to work on the other side of the rig and then this is where i'm basically going to try and get the grommet to the top of the rig using the reserve picking up the reserve and then kind of tucking it in and finessing it all the way in and then this is where i go ahead and make sure the bridle's coming out the bottom right hand side i'm going to grab my power tool and this is the tool that i use on the daily in my last video i used the pull-up cord and i'm going to go ahead and put the power tool through the closing loop 
through the top. Once again, that's bottom, top, right, left. That's how we close containers. Um, for the most part, some containers are different. Some containers like Mirages, they can close bottom, top, left, right. It just depends. This one's bottom, top, right, left. That's how most of them are gonna do. Uh, big Titty Rich Lady, that's how you remember it. Big Titty Rich Lady. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the last flap here through the left side. Fixing my power tool, making sure to fix my corners before I put tension on it. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the closing loop through all the grommets. And then once again, we're routing the closing pin up. Always you're gonna route it up, forever and always. For your whole skydiving career, that's how it's gonna be. I'm gonna go ahead and tuck in that excess bridle that I have there, make sure the pin is facing up. Now I can go ahead and remove my tool, whether it's the power tool or the closing loop. Ideally, you would want the power tool or the closing loop underneath the pin, this way you're not putting wear on your closing loop. You can go ahead and close it up there. And then I'm gonna make sure that I don't have any twists or tangles in my bridle. It looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and lay the pilot chute flat with the hacky down and then fold it in half with the bridle coming out of the bottom of the pilot chute. Do my quarter folds or my third folds like a wing, like the wings of a bat. And then I'm gonna fold it in half from the bottom to the top. And then just go ahead and stack the bridle on itself up and down, up and down, nice and easy, making sure once again there's no twists or tangles. You're gonna leave the excess coming out the top from the hacky side, kind of fold it into threes again. You should have a nice uh, rectangle there, and then you're gonna go ahead and put it in the bottom of the rig in that little pocket there, kind of tuck everything in. And then there you go. That's basically from start to finish how a pad job looks from my point of view. Uh, once again, I am moving pretty quickly here, but I could do them faster, I could do them slower, it just depends. And then you're off, ready to go. All right, so there you guys go. That's a pack job from full, like from the start to finish. Um, basically how I see it through my eyes. Um, I kind of took my time. I tried to explain everything in the best that I could. Once again, if you made it this far, I appreciate you. Go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. Hopefully you took something away from this video and hopefully your pack jobs will improve moving forward. Um, as always, blue skies. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Love you guys. Till next time. Yoo!